Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm, I'm Rudolf Klarwald, the CEO of Cove Therapeutics. Um, Cove is a, a clinical stage gene therapy company. We have actually one phase one, two programs ongoing, which has just completed its enrollment and will read out data later um, next year. Uh, the company is based on this expertise in developing program from, from academia to, to clinic in gene therapy. We have also a key uh, platform in uh, uh, delivery of, of gene therapy product called Alligator, which is a unique platform based on chemical modifications of AVs. And based on this platform, we are expanding our pipeline from initially ophthalmology to now more programs in neurology targeting both monogenic and non-monogenic disorders. Um, the platform, in few words, and I will come more in detail, is based on the post-production modifications of uh, uh, AVs. So it's, in a sense, inspired from antibody drug conjugate, except we are using a very different chemistry to modify chemically the uh, serotype. And today, we have been able to modify the AV2, 5, 8, and 9. And the consequence of the modifications is a change of the biology of the AV. We have uh, improved dramatically the biodistribution as well as the transduction of these vectors, and that has been supported by multiple in vivo studies in both retina and CNS tissue, in rodent as well as in non-human primate. Um, so our current portfolio of product is made of actually five, four programs. The, third, the first three programs are based on using conjugated AVs. Uh, we have uh, programs uh, targeting GBA1 Parkinson. Uh, so it's a, a program where we um, target the delivery of the GBA1 uh, gene encoding for the GKs, uh, targeting those subgroup of patients, 5 to 10% of Parkinson patients that are deficient in the GKs. We have already generated a rodent data, and we have an ongoing non-human primate studies. In these non-human primate studies, we are actually um, comparing head-to-head -head our conjugated AVGB1 construct versus AV9GB1, which is a similar construct to uh, actually developed by a competi competitor. Um, this program, we expect to have the uh, non-human primate data by the end of the year and based on this data, move this program to IND enabling study. We have a second program uh, targeting um, juvenile and very severe form of ALS called ALS First. In this program, we are combining our CAPSID technology with a very original mechanism of actions, which uh, basically is based on the regulation of this first protein, which is a, another form of a protein aggregates that leads to the development of ALS. We have already uh, we have in licensed that technology from University of Strasbourg with very compelling in vivo data. We are uh, confirming this data with ongoing rodent studies, and we expect to have um, data early 23. And finally, the last program in the ROG is new. We have just uh, in licensed that program and developed with a European partner that will be announced in the coming weeks programs that target the activation of the autophagilosomal pathway, so it's very complementary to GBA1. In this program, our first indications will be MSA. Uh, there's already uh, in vivo proof of concept data using an MSA model uh, demonstrating the uh, activity of uh, this original target. Here, again, we are using our technology of conjugated AV vectors. You will understand why, because this technology uh, enable really a very uh, important targeting and delivery of the uh, desired gene in the deep structure of the brain. And finally, uh, our historical program called CTX PD6 Beta is based on a, I would say, classical AV5. This program, as I mentioned previously, have just achieved in November last year the enrollment of the last patient. So it's a 1717 patient trial uh, treating the uh, uh, PDA6 beta mutated patients with retinitis pigmentosa. We expect to have the readout of this program at the first half of 2023. And upon the, this uh, data, we will decide to move that product to the next phase, which will be a pivotal phase. This program has been uh, 
partner with uh, a European specialty pharma and ophthalmology called TEA Open Innovation. We have actually outlicensed the European right. We kept uh, the US and ex Europe right. We are also leading the clinical development. And, and in a nutshell, through this agreement, these programs and the development for the phase three is fully financed thanks to uh, the um, financial we get from, from that collaboration. So the focus on the current use of proceeds and the future uh, uh, round of financing we expect to raise will be mostly around the platform and the CNS program. So talking about the platform, alligator platform for AV ligand conjugate. So our focus is the local delivery and improve the local delivery of vectors in both retina and CNS tissue. And for the sake of time, I will focus on the uh, CNS tissue here. Uh, the main uh, limitations is in, in, in different way. In, for the intraparenchymal administration, the AVs are not to be very sticky. So uh, AV1, AV2, 5, or AV RH10 are the standard of care for such a delivery, but often required even a very high dose or multiple site of administration in order to cover uh, the deep structure of the brain. Here we have a first capsid candidate that really uh, uh, perform much better than those uh, uh, existing serotype with one single administration. On the other hand, we are developing uh, uh, new vectors as well for the uh, one of the CSF route of administration called intra cisterna magna. Currently, the main vector used for that route of administration is AV9, and it's now very well documented that when you inject AV9 in the CSF route of administration, either by intrathecal or ICM route, you have a distribution which is mostly uh, focused or limited to the spine, a little bit in the cerebellum, but not beyond that, and definitely is not the right route of administration to target the brain, broadly speaking, and in particular, the deep structure of the brain. So coming back to the technology, and I will then uh, provide you with some uh, data. Um, this technology is made on uh, designing first a ligand, which enable a better targeting on docking of the vectors to uh, the desired uh, uh, cell type. So the design is based on, on human biology. So in a nutshell, our technology is very different from other, which are based on, based on, on generating billions of capsid by directed evolutions or DNA shuffling, and then screening those capsids on different animal models. In our case, we generate few dozens of capsid, combining different ligands and different serotypes, and then we screen them on rodent and primate. And because the biology or the design of the, 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 the ligand are based on on the human biology, we have a very good translation between rodent and primate. And our core technology is the way we bind this ligand, so the linker, the um, actually green uh, part of the ligand you see here, the way we bind it to the surface of the capsid. We have a site-specific chemistry to bind in one single step this ligand to the uh, surface of AV in conditions that are really suitable for AV with a very good yield in terms of uh, uh, conjugation. So again, we do not have any genetical modifications of the AV. We can work on different serotypes from different sources and different uh, downstream processing. So it's, it's a technology which is really uh, transferable and scalable. We have done multiple R&D batches. First, the technology coming from uh, a, a university in, the, in France, then we have moved that technology to a partner in Germany, and now we have our own capability in, in France at the Brenner Institute, uh, where we are performing uh, different conjugation. The initial technology was developed on AV2, and then we have developed the chemistry on file addition and patent to modified AV5, AV8, and AV9. And now we have libraries for all those serotypes. And um, another aspect which is important is from my knowledge, this is the only technology which can be used as a rescue technology for an existing uh, construct using an AV capsid. Because this chemistry occur at the very end of the purification. So if one have, uh, for instance, a product already designed with an AV8 on AV9, we can do the chemical modification and create already a new candidate ready to be tested. 
So we think it's a very great advantage, in particular for a pharma and biotech company that are interested in, in expanding their opportunity of, of new vectors without the need to redo plasmid and develop the whole USP and DSP process. So in terms of what is the impact of the uh, chemical conjugation, uh, we have run multiple in vivo studies over the last three years, and uh, on, 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 on the consequences, we have changed dramatically the biodistributions and the uh, uh, transduction efficiency of those uh, virus. What we have changed as well, and I, I will not uh, elaborate more, is we have observed that we have changed the immunogenicity of the vectors. So we have a reduced immunogenicity, less neutralizing antibody created against the vectors. We have also observed that the, um, the conjugated vectors are less vulnerable to pre-existing neutralizing antibody. So talking about, so this, this is uh, just a slide summarizing the existing library. So we are expanding those library. Uh, as I mentioned, we have designed on different serotypes. We have in vivo validations in both rodent and Neumann primate, and we have already selected capsid, especially the conjugated AV2, which is one of the capsid used for our uh, portfolio CNS program. Uh, and for this one, we are now at the stage that we have already produced the first GM, GMP-like batches of uh, conjugated uh, uh, capsids. So again, this technology is scalable and transferable in a, in a CDMO. So talking about the biology, here is uh, one of the experiments we uh, conducted in Rodent, where we have injected the conjugated AV2 versus AV2 via two routes of administration, the thalamus and the striatum, in one hemisphere. And in the both cases, we observe clearly using GFP as a reporter gene that we have increased dramatically not only the transduction, but also the distribution of the vector to the whole hemisphere. And when we look more in detail about how we change the cell tropism, the answer is no. We still have, with the conjugated AV2, the neuronal tropism, which is the tropism of AV2. So based on this data, we decided to actually uh, perform the same experiment or comparable, ex comparable experiment in non-human primate. I would like to, so this experiment is in an intraparenchymal administration of the conjugated AV2 versus AV2. The administration is one single administration, the striatum, 90 microliter, 7.7, 7, 10 to the 10 total VGs. So for those who are uh, familiar with this setting on these uh, indications, it's a very low dose in, in, that, in this specific setting. And we compare the conjugated AV2 head to head to AV2 as well as to AV5, because AV5 is, of course, one of the preferred vectors in this setting. And we observed very clearly on the picture here that we have a very intense and broad staining of the GFP in the, page, in the primate treated with the conjugated AV2. And the spreading is also very important in the substantial nigra part. So we have this retrograde uh, distribution of the vector, which is a very interesting properties for targeting the neurodegenerative disorders. When we quantify the biodistributions by looking at the percentage of each structure which is covered by GFP expression, we observe that, that basically the conjugated AV2 has doubled the biodistributions of AV2 and AV5 in all the interesting structure here targeted, the striatum substantia nigra and globus pallidus. We have looked at it's not a GLP tox, but we have looked at some tox, uh, 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 possible tox signals. We have seen nothing. We haven't seen also any leak of the vectors out of the, the brain and the CNS. This is another example of an experiment we've done in the retina. So it's a subretinal administration in primate as well. And here again, uh, injecting the conjugated AV2 versus AV2, we observe that we have an earlier expression, more intense expression of the GFP. And here again, we observe the spreading of the GFP in the whole retina. And, and it's something that we observed in, in this primate here, but also in the previous rat experiment we've done. Uh, so 
in a nutshell, this is the data we got from, from, from the platform. The first candidate, uh, Capsid LO1 AV2, which is a conjugated AV2, has been used for the GBA1 program. Uh, the objective is to really demonstrate that you can have a better delivery in, in the brand. For the sake of time, I will just go fast just to say that we are very interested in the autophagilosomal pathway. GBA1 is the first example of what we are doing. Uh, it is well known that you know, uh, part of the patients in Parkinson's Lewy body dementia have the deficiency, and our objective here is to deliver, using the conjugated AV2 capsid, uh, the GBA1 gene in the dopaminergic neuron through the striatal administration, and we have the first uh, data from uh, CBMI uh, studies that has proven to be very efficient. Actually, we have uh, the same extent of efficacy with a dose which is 10 times lower than uh, what the competitors have used in the same setting. So in a nutshell, we are a um, clinical stage company uh, uh, with uh, a, a very diversified portfolio platform for ocular CNS space. Of course, we want to use that technology beyond these two area. Uh, it's a matter of uh, bandwidth, but also potential partnership with pharma. We will have a lot of um, catalyst expected in the next 18 months uh, for the CNS program, as well as early 23 for our clinical stage program. And we are currently positioning the company for a, a next round of financing, which will happen uh, at the end of this year. Um, a little bit further time. Thank you. Thank you.